Old time religion, give me that old time. 
Unveil your heart this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Not by might, nor by power. By your Spirit, say the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 He is awesome. He is awesome. And as we transition this morning, I want to encourage you. Hallelujah, that this is our finest hour. 
Hallelujah. There has never been a greater moment in the history of the church than right here and right now. Praise God. You are thinking that there's intimidating factors that are all around us. But the truth of the matter is the devil is going to push his hardest <laughs> at our greatest moment. Is, is that not a logical, conclusive uh, determination of, of hell's mind? Amen? He's going he's gonna to rear his head the greatest at our finest moment, our finest hour as the people of God. So expect that. Hallelujah. But there's a great door. Hallelujah. And effectual. I said there's a great door. And effectual. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm praying for holy boldness today. In the name of Jesus. Not human arrogance. Holy boldness. Praise God. Praise God that we will be able to to do what God has called us to do. And like what the preacher said the other night, amen, he has chosen a first string team to be in this finest hour. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What an exciting uh, moment in history to be alive, to speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To trust in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to sing one more chorus this morning. Amen. We're going to turn in our Bibles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But let's sing this chorus this morning. Oh, for a thousand tongues. thousand tongues to sing. Unto thee. I feel like that this morning. Oh, to to raise in honor to the King. Hallelujah. Somebody worship Him. together. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's just open up before him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, wonderful. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to take two 
uh, portions from the scripture this morning, Isaiah chapter 29, and uh, starting in verse 13, and then we're going to go to Acts chapter 17. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 29. Verse 13, hallelujah. I greet each of you in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no one like him. Hallelujah. Praise God. None like him. Praise God. Isaiah 29, the 13th verse. If you could read along with me. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men therefore behold I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark and they say who seeth us and who knoweth us surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? And in that day, shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness the meek also shall increase their joy in the lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the holy one of israel <laughs> acts chapter 17 and verse 6 Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Can you just lift your hands and say, Lord, speak to my heart today. Let your word save me. Hallelujah. I pray for boldness this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That we'll know what to say in this hour where men seek to hide counsel in darkness and yet what we are doing is in the broad light of the sun hallelujah praise god praise god that all men may know hallelujah praise god praise god can we give him another hand Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for standing. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. How many had your coffee this morning? Please stand if you had your coffee this morning. No, I'm just teasing. Lift, lift up your hand if you had your coffee this morning. Praise God. If... You were to 
wager what was the difference between tea and coffee drinkers in the world? What would you think would be the ratio? Anybody want to jump out on a limb here this morning? How many thinks that there's more coffee drinkers in the world than tea drinkers? A couple of you? <laughs> Next to water, tea is the most consumed beverage on the face of the earth. In the United States, 3.6 billion gallons is consumed every year. Two billion people drink tea every single day. Three billion tons is produced worldwide on an annual basis. One pound equals 200 cups. So you can do the math. <laughs> Praise God. Tea is... an amazing substance, both in its production and in its chemistry. And back in 1939, George Harold Saunders and Clarence Z. Kelly composed a song, which probably most of you have heard before. It goes like this. I'm a little, help me out this morning. I'm a little teapot. Short and stout. Don't say that too loudly. Here is my, and here is my, when I get all, I will shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me in this little rhyme. And you got me thinking, a guy, now I've heard it all, a guy can preach from just about anything. But in the, the slide that shows the very first advertisement of this particular um, song that was sung it's broken into four parts there is a handle there is a spout there is a steam and there is noise that's produced and there is a pouring there is a tipping that happens in this scenario that repeats itself over Billions of times every single day in the history of this year and years going forward. Praise God. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. Tells a story of. where God looks. The Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looketh on the heart. Praise God. In order for us to be effective, we need to give God our handle. The Holy Ghost spoke of Paul that he was a chosen vessel. 
And so I'm on good ground this morning to remind us that we are vessels. This is just a clay pot. But the function of this clay pot is living out over and over and over again in our world. Praise God. God needs a handle on you. And we're living in a world that has become like we read in Isaiah 29, all about appearances. You know how much is spent today on the body. You can get a cream or a pill for everything from just about the hair on your earlobes to the hair on your toes. You can walk down aisles of everything that is marketed to the superficial. Praise God. I just want to take my time this morning and impact us with a thought. God needs a handle on my life. If he's going to use me, he needs a handle on my life. Here is my handle. I wonder if, if from a heart this morning in a brand new way, somebody would walk out of this church today saying, God, here is my handle. Hallelujah. It, it's not how I appear to everyone else. Because we can doctor that up. Praise God. We can, we can put on a performance. And in some respects, our culture teaches us to. And there is propriety. There is decorum. There is all of those aspects of, of politeness. Hallelujah. But there is something that has to come from a heart that says, God, I'm going to give you my heart. God is not looking at the outward appearance. He is looking at the heart. Praise God. Praise God. A heart belongs to God even when no one is watching. Psalms 121 and verse 8. The psalmist writes of his comings in and goings out. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Hallelujah. In this pot, there is a coming in and there is a going out. The contents are entirely composed of what is coming in and for the purpose of what is going out. I see him in the wilderness, this psalmist of Israel, when no one is watching, pouring his heart out to God. Praise God. We're in a generation that has become professional churchgoers. We're even professional sermon listeners. We like the cadence and we like the flow. We like the volume. And, but oh, for a generation that knows how to get alone with God. Knows how to put aside all of the external and find a place. Hallelujah. Like the preacher said, to get a handle on God and give him a handle on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want God 
to have my handle because I believe there's something that he wants to do with my life. I believe there's a destiny. There's an outpouring. There's a tipping over that's going to transpire. Hallelujah. But he's got to have a hold of me in that hour. Because when something's upside down, you got to have a hold of it, a good, solid grip. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I promise you there's an upside down in your life. But that upside down has a purpose. That upside down has a pouring out function. It has a, something that God wants to do through it. Hallelujah. But in that upside down hour, God's got to have a hold of the handle of my life firmly. Because everything that can shake, it will shake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to stay here for a little while. I want God to have my heart. I remember as a, as a child, I envied my brother because he got away with everything. Is there anybody here that had a sibling that got away with everything? Come on. Be honest. <laughs> be careful if your parents are sitting close by because, well, you know how that all pans out. Praise God. But my brother, you know, he got away with everything. And I envied him. And he was the baby brother. <laughs> and I was the older brother. <laughs> and uh, But I look back on life, and it was like, man, I got caught at everything. I had this little problem uh, when I was young. I, 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 I'd lied to my parents, and I had this little nervous Reaction. Whenever I would tell a lie, I would grab my ear. <laughs> Somebody said, that's really dumb. You know, if you're trying to get away with something, but at, you know, five and four years old, I had no, no real cognizance of, of what I was, uh, you know, what I was doing and how obvious I was. I worked in retail for a lot of years, and, and people would come into the store, and they would, they would steal, and they never realize how obvious they are. You know how obvious a person is that's trying to steal? Nobody else stands in the aisle looking at the shelf and looking both ways up and down and then moves and walks around up two or three more aisles and goes back to the same place and looking up and down. Nobody does that if they're a paying customer. And the truth of the matter is, in many respects, our heart is obvious to the sensitive sight and the sensitive ear and there are times in our life where it's going to produce its true contents steam and pressure and heat will will be involved in the process and whatever is really on the inside is going to come out hallelujah praise god and i always got found out but i look back and i and i and i uh, I see what God was doing. He was producing a heart that was open, that was broken, that was so familiar with failure that my entire trust and dependence at some point would be upon him. Listen, if anything good is going to come out of this vessel, it's going to have to be because God had something to do with what was on the inside of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, create in me a, a clean heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard a story of a, a man who was in a, a, a famous church in the south, and, and he was praying in the corner, and, and another man was praying in another corner, and he heard this man pray over and over again, Oh, Lord, deliver me from myself. Deliver me from myself. And when they got up, and uh, went to leave the prayer room. He looked over and the other man got up and it was J.T. Pugh. A great author, a great pastor and a man of God. Gone on to be with the Lord now. Known probably to most people here today. Still praying in the later years of his life. After his powerful influence across the world. Oh God, deliver me from myself. Hallelujah. My prayer this morning is that we never get beyond that prayer. Because that's a prayer from a heart. That's a prayer from, from a handle that's extended to God. Hallelujah. God, grab a hold of me. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of me tight. And know me from the inside out. Understand me. Look and perceive. Try me, as the old song says. 
and see if there be any wicked way in me. Hallelujah. Thou knowest my comings in and my goings out. Praise God. Praise God. I want God to have a hold of my heart, don't you? Praise the Lord. We've gone through a season of proficiency, and I promise you, it's, it's not going to be our proficiency in an earthly sense that delivers people from their bondage. We have a, a, a youth culture around us today that is saturated with drugs and saturated with sex, and they're fast coming to a place that they're recognizing in their brokenness uh, that that is not going to satisfy. And when they're coming out of the world and they're coming out of that darkness and they're looking for light, uh, it's not going to be our fleshly proficiency that delivers them from their bondage. It's going to be hearts uh, that have been turned into handles uh, and God truly has a hold of our life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. My comings in belong to him and my goings out belong to him. Praise God. Praise God. The intimidation, the fear factor is growing across our nation. Uh, there are uh, university professors that are beginning to speak out today about the fact that our systems of learning, our institutions of learning are more afraid of political incorrectness than they are true study and examination of facts and details. Teachers are warned of, of, uh, of triggers, and, and uh, it, it is a great intimidation across our land where people don't want to speak out about the facts that they have examined. I'm still a firm believer that my children need to examine the facts. Hallelujah. Somebody say, well, everybody's way of life is equal. I, I'm here to tell you that after examining all the data, after examining all of the observations in my life, I have determined that that is not so. Hallelujah. I believe that a life given to Jesus Christ is better than any other aspect. Hallelujah. You say, how can you say that? Because I've done the observation. I've done the examination. Hallelujah. I've searched Praise God, praise God. And I am thoroughly convinced based on my experience. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You've got to have a spout. You've got to have a spout. Praise God. Oh, when the church will find her voice. Everybody's got a voice, it seems like today. And I'm, I'm preaching with a burden today for a church that needs to find their voice. Hallelujah. There is a way to speak. Praise God. And certainly there have been uh, things done in the past that have, have wounded and hindered. But we cannot define ourselves by those past moments. There's got to be a spout in your life. You've got to find your voice. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 19. If you could give me that just for a moment. Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is afar off. And to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give me Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all time. I will barack 
God. I will Shabbat God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Don't lose your voice. Hallelujah. We have freedom in this land. There are many countries where they can't preach openly, where they cannot worship openly. And yet they get themselves inside a room and they bar the windows and, and cover up the doors and in the, um, enough volume as, as they can do without being overheard, they worship God. And yet in a land where we're free, we're inhibited to lift our voice and to open our mouth and to give God praise. Hallelujah. What is the sacrifice of praise? It is the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I, I've been to some places uh, where there were strong religious trends uh, and there was such a spirit of deadness. Uh, there was such a dark cover that hovered. Uh, it's like I just, I just wanted to poke up on top of the clouds and let some light in. But oh, thank God for a Holy Ghost experience. Thank God when the glory came down. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll tell you what, when the glory came down, I prayed in hundreds and hundreds of altars with hundreds and hundreds of people in my lifetime. I remember being way up north in a, in a reserve community called Picanjicum, and it was a fly-in reserve or you could, you could go in over the water. And we had an altar there that morning, and this man came to the front, and he just stood there. He just stood there with his mouth closed and his eyes shut, looking straight ahead. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I've taught over the years. Hallelujah. There is a, a deaf and a dumb spirit. Spirit that's creeping into people, creeping into cultures. Hallelujah. It produces a, a suicide spirit. Hallelujah. And I walked over to him, and, and it wasn't about volume necessarily. It was about heart. And I said, I said, the devil wants you to keep your mouth closed, but you can open your mouth if you want to. And just begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I, I was standing real close to him. And I remember just in a, in a quiet voice, uh, he began to speak. It, you know, I love you, Jesus. Uh, I want the Holy Ghost. Uh, and all of a sudden, tears began to roll down his cheeks. Uh, and just a few minutes, uh, he had stammering lips. Uh, and God began to fill him with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. You've got to have a spout. Uh, you've got to have an egress. Uh, you've got to have an outlet in your life. Uh, I've determined uh, ain't nobody going to steal my praise. Uh, in a midnight hour, Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. Sang praises unto God. They'd given God a handle to their life. And so they were pouring out. But when they were pouring out their praise, hallelujah, God was fixing to turn their world upside down. An earthquake was going to shake that prison. And there was going to be a substance which would detoxify the atmosphere, which would bring life and hope into prisoners that were lost, into a jailer that was missing perceived his destiny hallelujah hallelujah praise God praise God the fruit of our lips I remember years being mentored by a senior superintendent. Said He said, young preachers, don't give in to the habit of praying in your mind. Pray out loud. And not just when you're in the church, but when you're at home and you're, and you're kneeling down, pray out loud. Open your mouth. Speak it into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with praying in your mind when, when you're at work and going down the street. But there needs to be a place where there's an egress where you speak it's tied to your testimony it's tied to the aspect of boldness in your life and it's tied to what God has promised he will do with your vessel the sacrifice of praise the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name hallelujah there's white and yellow and green and black. No food material is more fascinating and chemically complex and diverse than tea. Polyphenols represent 
around 40% of the dry weight. Producing antioxidants that cleanse and bring healing to the body. Hallelujah. He causes the chemical change in the kitchen. When they cut tea and they bring it to its production, the only thing that's removed is water. The tea wilts and there's a drying process and that's the only chemical change that takes place up until the kitchen. But the real change happens in the kitchen. All the men said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Heat causes the chemical change in the kitchen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the heat comes to a certain point, the water is poured, the tea is put in, and there's a steeping process. There's a literal chemical change in the tea, and it releases antioxidants a flavor, and an antioxidant. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Heat is what's going to produce the chemical change in your life necessary to detoxify the atmosphere around you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm listening to a, a tape some time ago. I think it's William McDowell uh, was talking about uh, desperation and in uh, Mark chapter 10 verse 49 there's a story about this man who was crying out hallelujah we'll just turn there for a moment Mark chapter 10 and verse 49 we'll go back up to verse 46 and he came to Jericho and as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people blind Bartimaeus the son of Timaeus sat by the highway side begging. Hallelujah. That's, that's my story. Story of a beggar. Hallelujah. The mindset of a slave. Hallelujah. But when he heard that Jesus, when he heard that it was Jesus, hello somebody, of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. And the response of the crowd was, quiet down. And sad to say, there is a prevailing spirit in Christianity today. It says, just quiet it down. Just tone it down. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you know what happened? He began to cry out all the more. Hallelujah. And, and you don't think Jesus heard him the first time? Come on, somebody. Desperation. Got to sound. Hallelujah. And, and he began to cry out all the more. And, and, and the verse says in verse 49, Jesus stood Still, <laughs> praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. There, there, there was a certain sound to desperation, hallelujah. What the Bible says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I'm not talking about volume necessarily, hallelujah. But there is a certain sound to desperation, <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a certain connection to the heart. There is a certain fruit of the lips. When, when a man gets desperate, there's a shift in, in the vernacular. There's a change in the tone. Hallelujah. Something begins to be produced. Hallelujah. And the old rhyme says, when I get all steamed up, I will shout. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's going to be some heat applied in your life. If you haven't had it yet, it will come. But you can determine. There's a song I used to hear out in the world says, Shout at the devil. Listen, volume doesn't 
intimidate Satan and volume doesn't impress God. But if it's connected to the heart, it has the ability to apprehend something in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. I'm not going to lift my voice to the devil. I'm not going to shout a complaint when the heat comes on in my life. But I'm going to give my praise to God. I'm going to lift my voice in the sanctuary. I'm going to give a praise. There's going to be an egress and an exit coming out of my spirit. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. Hallelujah. Because you know what? The world is expecting you to go sour. But when you go sweet, when the heat comes on, there's something of a divine component that they can recognize. Because you're not supposed to be getting sweeter. You're supposed to be getting sour. Hallelujah. But it's just a steeping. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when I start to shout, I believe there's a signal to God that says I'm ready. Hallelujah. The heat's on and I'm ready. I'm giving you the praise because it's not done when you shout. What's done is when you get tipped upside down and poured out on the toxic environment that's around you. But what's in the tea, what's in the brew is an antioxidant. It has a potential to detoxify the environment that's around you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 When I get all steamed up, I will shout. Oh, just be quiet. Part of me is. Hallelujah. Just be quiet and dignified. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. How many times in Scripture there was people that became undignified that got the attention of Jesus Christ because the pain of their need was greater than their fear of the crowd. Hello. Some people are so intimidated by the culture. I'll tell you what, when your need gets so great, that intimidation starts to shrink and your need starts to grow and you begin to cry out, I got to get help from somebody. You watch people that are going through a sickness. You watch people that have been uh, uh, dignified all their lives and all of a sudden their family is ripped apart and their finances are pulled away and their health is gone and suddenly uh, that poise, hallelujah, is loosened. But in that hour, praise God, there's a determination that's going to be based on where your heart is. You will be discovered in that moment when the heat's applied because you're going to cry out and you're going to cry out for the rocks to fall and cover you or you're going to cry to the rock of Israel. Hallelujah. Come on, in this last day, the heat of the sun is going to scorch men and they're going to shake their fist at God and they're going to blaspheme God in that moment when the heat's turned up. But you know what's going to happen to the church? The church is going to cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When persecution comes, the heart of the true believer is going to lift a voice. It's going to cry out to the king of kings and say, Jesus, our son of David, I'm ready to be poured out. I'm ready to be tipped over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The heat in your life is meant to produce Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him the heat in your life is meant to produce. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 16 and 17, where we started from. I'm going to conclude with these two verses one more time. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 16 and 17. Hallelujah. In verse 13, it said, These people draw near unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but remove their heart and minds far from me. There's a people that are trying to give God the spout and never giving God the handle. Hello? There's a, there, there is a religion today, a growing religion, that says you can come and you can Worship God, you can love God, you can sing praises, but it doesn't matter how you live or where you go, 
or how you operate in front of the culture. No change in behavior, no change in lifestyle. Not going to preach about holiness. Not going to talk about separation from the world. Come on, somebody. There ain't no way we can be a people that draws nigh to God with our mouth, but we've never given God the handle of our heart. The real question is, is he Lord of your life and your choices? Because I got a message this morning. That religion, it ain't the real deal. To repeat what the preacher said, it's not the real deal. And when the heat comes on, it'll be exposed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. When I gave my heart to Jesus, he became Lord of my choices. He became Lord, hallelujah, of my choices. He became Lord from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I gave him my heart. I gave him my entertainment. I gave him where I go. I gave him what comes out of my mouth. I gave him how I appear before the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And yeah, it's prophesied there. A great movement in the world of people that draw nigh to God with their mouth, but their heart is far from him. But listen, we need a praise and we need a spout, but we need it to come from a heart that's firmly in the hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's Lord of everything in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's important not just because we want to be right and somebody else is wrong. That's important because there's coming a day where the church is going to be tipped over. Hallelujah. Tip me over and pour me out. Hallelujah. There's a tipping. There's a tipping that God is going to do with the church. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Acts, they, they that have turned the world upside down. You know why they turned the world upside down? But because Jesus had turned them upside side down hallelujah praise God praise God and he was pouring them out and out of their suffering out of their persecution there was mercy and forgiveness and gifts of the spirit and supernatural operations and anointing and the true gospel of death burial and repentance and arguing for the identity of Jesus Christ everywhere they went and God confirmed the word with signs following hallelujah let me tell you something any doctrine, uh, amen, uh, which um, takes away from the majesty and the glory of Calvary uh, is not true. Hallelujah. Any doctrine that takes away from the majesty and glory of the oneness of God uh, cannot be true. Hallelujah. We must stand hold, uh, hallelujah, of this character and nature of Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and he is my God. He's not just God, but he is Lord. He is Lord of my life, and he's got a handle on my heart. Praise God. This people remove their hearts from me, and their fear and reverence for me are a commandment of men that is learned by repetition without any thought as to the meaning. Some people will come to church, and we don't have to look anywhere. They'll sing a song. They'll repeat a prayer. Huh? Come on, and that can happen right here. We can sing a song that we've been hearing for the last 50 years, and it, it doesn't cross our heart, not one iota. We can repeat a prayer. We can read a Bible verse. Come on, somebody. I want the Holy Ghost to talk to me this morning because we're coming to the end of this thing. It's all going to wrap up here in a short order. Hallelujah. In case, in case you're not aware, we're in the last days. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he said in verse 16, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as potter's clay. <laughs> oh, your perversity, you turn things upside down. 
they're arguing today arguments that are absolutely ludicrous. Even for the man that would stop for 10 seconds and think about what they're arguing at high levels of university, they are not even logical. They're calling good evil and evil good, and that's exactly what is prophesied would come in this day. They have turned the world upside down. <laughs> so when the apostles came and turned the world upside down, it come right side up. <laughs> because it, it was already upside down. Hallelujah. <laughs> and here it says that they would turn it upside down. But the great prophecy said, in a little while, in a very little while, somebody said a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day, in that day, the deaf shall hear. If you'll let God get a good firm grip on your heart, when the heat comes on, just cry out to him like you've always been. There's a little hole in the top of this guy. Ooh. It says, T's ready. But it's not finished. The water's ready. But it's not finished until it's been steeped and poured out. Praise God. And God is getting us ready to pour us out on the world. How many knows this world is a toxic place? It's a toxic place. It needs antioxidant. Holy antioxidant. And that's going to come from the 40% dry away of polyphenols, which is the flavor of the true church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It calls holiness beauty. Worship the Lord in the, in the beauty of holiness. And that's a heart that's saying, ain't nothing about this flesh holy. Only holy thing is a spirit that filled me. And he imputed his righteousness. And he is making me like him. And wherever you're at this morning, it's directional. It doesn't matter whether you're in kindergarten or in grade 12. First John teaching we are purified even as we are pure. Because it's the condition of the heart. And God knows whether we're at the beginning of the race or nearing the end of the race, a pure heart is still a mandate. Amen? Whether this is the first day you ever heard about Jesus or come to Sunday school as a, as a child or you've been serving God for 50 years, the condition of your heart is still a mandate that it be pure before the Lord. Hallelujah because he's going to tip us over and there's going to be fruit hallelujah the deaf will hear somebody would you stand with me for a moment today hallelujah praise God praise God hallelujah the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness there's people all over this country that are in obscurity and in darkness we have a generation that's raised up. They're not immoral. They're amoral. They don't even have a foundation of morality anymore. Hello. No concept of right and wrong today. They're in darkness. But there's something that they will recognize. <laughs> Praise God. There's something that they will recognize in that day. I believe the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost is right here. 
Hallelujah. I believe it's happening in the world right now. A mixed up, confused, untoward culture is going to have their eyes open. It's going to have their ears unstopped. Hallelujah. When God takes a persecuted church, when he takes a people, hallelujah, and listen, they're going to persecute the church. They're going to come against the church. That spirit of intimidation will increase and get stronger because the heat's being applied. Hallelujah. What are we going to do in that hour when they start to come after us, put us in jail, and, and challenge our teaching, challenge our biblical worldview, and call us before the courts of men? I tell you what we're going to do the same thing we were doing in the wilderness. Uh, hallelujah. Singing a, a clear song. Uh, hallelujah. The same thing they were doing uh, in Philippi in the jailhouse. Uh, singing praises unto God. Uh, hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, in that hour when he pours us out. Uh, hallelujah. There's going to be an awakening. There's going to be a revival. There's going to be an opening of deaf ears. Uh, there's going to be an opening of blind eyes. Uh, there's going to be those that didn't know truth. Uh, that it's going to come clear to them. I see it now. I understand it now. Hallelujah. That couldn't perceive in the darkness become bright light. Why? Because you allowed God to tip your life upside down and pour you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm thinking here today, he has chosen us for this hour. It's a, an honor to be alive in 2017. Hallelujah. Out of your praise and out of your prayer is the substance that will detoxify the atmosphere around you and bring the hearts of people back to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shine for Jesus. When you go into McDonald's, look people in the eye. Hallelujah. Greet people with a sincere heart. Hallelujah. When you go into work, have your heart open and transparent, able to be rent and touched by the feelings of people's infirmities because doors are opening. I'm preaching to you here today. Doors are opening. Don't pay attention to what's happening on the political realm in that respect that we would become intimidated. Keep your eyes for the open door. Hallelujah. Because this is our finest hour. This is an hour where his name is going to be proclaimed among the heathen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm praying this morning, tip me over and pour me out. Oh God, get me upside down so that your glory can get out of my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that would join me in the altar for a few moments and say, God, tip me over and pour me out. Give me an upside down experience. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give me a heart to perceive. Open doors. Help me not to be intimidated by the hour that's upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, they'll rage. The heathen will rage. Oh, the kingdoms of this world will reel and rock. But this is the hour of testimony. This is the hour to lift your voice and say, I know whom I have.